All right, everybody. Wild Man Willie here, and today we've just been chilling out and enjoying a beautiful Tuesday, taking some recovery time on my poor, my poor hands. I got cuts and bruises all over me at the moment. That being said, I just got a call out on a No Crank No Start Mazda 3. It's a customer I've dealt with before. So I tell you what, how about y'all ride along with me, and let's go figure out what that's all about. Hop in the Mitsubishi. Let's see what we got today. All right, folks, we got ourselves a no-crank, no-start call. Downtown-ish. Mazda I've worked Head on before. On Road. Three and a half miles away. Let's go see what that's all about. that box of stuff just a moment see I almost left without my britches pulled up Let's try again. Maybe we can get out of here this time. So we just got a light duty diagnostic load out in the car. It's been pouring rain all day. We got some beautiful sunshine for the moment. Oregon springtime officially. We got buds on the trees. We're starting to see some leaves. Got some blooms on this pink thing here. Starting to see just a little bit of green kiss out on the rest of it though. Little buds popping up. Take the next left on Road. Alright, we are officially dispatched. We have left the dockyard. It's nice Quarter to see some mile. sun. Been awfully gloomy. But we're getting these beautiful poke throughs. Hopefully it'll stay that way for me while I figure out what this car is doing. See so yeah, this car, it's in decent shape. Young gentleman's taking way better car care of it than it was before he got it. I can tell you that. had some problems with the brake job another big shop did and I kind of saw what was going on but it was one of these if I touch it then their guarantee and warranty is done on all this right away and reputable big shop he had to go through some malarkey to get it right through him but eventually he did at no additional charge so I felt like I advised him well on that one even though it meant Hell, I could have fixed it, it felt like, several times for not too much money. Then again, what if I was wrong? Step A, I could not fully di dive in to do the diag on it without also fear of messing up that warranty. It was like, well, you need to talk to that other shop about this and this and see what they think about that. And that's all just theory, though, because I can't take it apart. Well, again eventually and I never got the whole story they didn't pass the information on to him well enough eventually them grabby brakes left that shop not grabbing no more a few things looked a little bit different too like they definitely went in and played with the master cylinder and associated lines so in any event it won't start for them today I think the battery probably is low in it from the description, I'm suspecting a starter. We're going to go out there and tappy tap that bad boy with a hammer and see if we can't get a start out of it to confirm. I'm hoping things will be that simple to figure out. I'm concerned that Mazda has put this starter on the... Well, it'd be the right-hand side of the engine, which is the, the back side 
of the engine. So I think this is very not Toyota Access. I think this is very much from underneath. But we'll see what it is. It could be anything. I can go through theory and I can make some predeterminations. But there's really no telling fault. Could be bad key, bad battery terminal, just not enough charge in the battery. Hell, they don't know that much about cars out of gas. We don't know yet. We will determine the state of the vehicle when we arrive. That old Bronco. It's not a Bronco. That's a square body Ford friggin' Ranger in reverse in the turn lane. That's pretty though. It's a survivor. I wouldn't be surprised if I get a call to work on that. That's small town life for you folks. This is a big small town is what it is. We call it a city, but it's a big small town. The reason I say that, all my clientele seem to be connected with like one, maybe two steps of separation, but that's it. Word gets around fast. There's 170,000 people here. More than half own cars. More than half of that own old cars. And a significant fraction of it go on Craigslist and call me to fix them up. Biggest problem I have on a daily is too much call to accomplish what I need to. Someone has to be disappointed sometimes. There is only one of me. And as a businessman, I need to get a lot better at just telling people that. At, at, let, at letting them go rather than end up stringing them along. I never intend to string anybody. I have done it lately. I have done it lately. Whether I liked it or not, it's how it turned out. And I made a customer who, I won't say they've been an awesome money making customer but they're a nice person and I wish they didn't feel about me the way they did today but they're entitled to their opinion that's exactly what I told them with the apology I think they wanted something more we could have talked about that again they're upset I'm not going to take it personally at all you're having a bad day when your car is in trouble and you're having an even worse day when your mechanic don't show up when he says he's going to I try to do well. I catch them most. Delays are a thing. Now I will say, we communicated with this person fully. They weren't just in the dark and waiting for me and get ghosted. That's not... We didn't do that. We didn't do that. Just kind of a best laid plans of mice and men kind of deal. It got later than it was supposed to and they had further expectations than I was able to render at that time. Anyway, enough of that. We're headed under the big bridge and we're going downtown. Welcome to a Eugene traffic jam. This is about full traffic levels. Everything's moving. Everybody's pretty much respecting each other. Driving slow. I mean, I'm sure we could fit one or two more. Through each light we go through, but I don't feel like I need my get back whip and the hammer to make it through this situation. Well, that's what we're doing. We're continuing straight to stay on Coburg Road. Cross over the big green bridge here. know where I'm going. Use the right lane to keep the left at the fork. Follow signs for 8th Avenue. Okay. That's a funny way of saying go straight. Go straight. I, I would have liked to heard that. I had to sit here and think about it. I know, that's dangerous, right? 
You gotta keep her thinking cap open though. She's right. Be prepared to stop when that light flashes. Alright, we're keeping right. Doing some construction down here. We're finest deploying on motorcycles. I'm gonna leave them the hell alone. Oh, it's gonna round about me. It expected me to do something else here. I'm gonna stick with the pattern though. Don't feel like getting tagged. We can make a ride at Broad Street. That's where I'm more familiar with anyway. Head on a swivel. This big pedestrian crossing here can be a bit confusing if you're not used to them. This is a different traffic operation. Turn right after 7 Eleven on the right onto Patterson Street. Whether that thing's flashing or not, no matter what, you pretend there is a pedestrian going to run out in front of you. Same thing down here. In a quarter mile, turn right on East Avenue. All right. All the college kids is parking, doing the street parking. Get to see some of downtown Eugene. Oh, I'm waiting for all these trees to have leaves on them. That's when it really gets pretty. You can see just how much tree cover there is and going to be out here. The moss is loving it. It gets this weird green sheen on them after the rains. It's Pacific Northwest thing. Beautiful gloom, like I say. Yeah, it's damp and dank. I love it though. I complain about the weather all the time. In reality, until I moved out here, I only seen snow a couple of times in my life, and I still ain't seen it a whole bunch. But it is neat that it's a thing that happens. You can see some of this old, old downtown housing. Well, let's get down here and see what this is about. Turn left onto Mill Alley. Turn left onto the alley, huh? Bicycle lanes. You see, they got these dividers to slow us down, and you got your public usable rent-a-bike things right there. Yes, I stop where I just have to yield sometimes. You know what, though? Caution, bros, caution. I know how I am. And if I'm that bad, what about everybody else, right? So, I just don't feel like daring nothing. All right, now how do we get down this alley? This is the alley. Okay, yes, this appears to be the alley. Thank you, Beetle. I appreciate you very much. Give you some room. Your destination is on the left. Let's see, and we are looking for the Mazda. Oh, I believe I see a Mazda. I don't like driving through deep puddles in these parking lots. You never know how deep they're really going to be. We're going to kind of park in the not parking beside that. If any parking is somebody's parking. All right. We have arrived at our destination. Let's see what this one has in store for us, folks. Body, and that's been that's been kind of sad lately really all right 
like I say, my little car has a little tiny alternator and battery. So it's not the king of jump starting everything off. So, yeah, that's what I was but it, it'll do it. Jumping them off like this is like we do a mouth and mouth resuscitation and try to get the weight up. Okay. Okay? Versus hot and ready to rock. Bam! It starts up with no letting the problem and don't have nothing to do with it. So we're going to see what it does. This may start it way up. Well, the first thing I want to do though, go ahead and climb in your car and push the buttons to turn off the stereo and the HVAC and everything. What's HVAC? Air conditioning. I just don't want any fans or anything running. We need it to be using as little electricity as it can possibly be. Because I don't have a hell of a lot of electricity to feed it. Hang on, I can't hear you. Ford F-250 that has some giant reserve, if that makes sense. But now, if, if I don't hit anything and the damn thing just starts up, then all this is is a discharge battery or something causing it to go slow. It is from two years ago, which tells me the battery itself should, strong word should there, be able to come back to life. Like, it should be rechargeable either way. And if not, it should be under warranty as well. You don't need to buy a new battery. Do we need to have it fully charged? Yeah, probably. But if we can get the damn thing to start, then it don't need nothing, really. Or we'll go from there. We're not chasing the problem I thought we were. So, much similar situation. Seems like it has happened before, but not today. O'Reilly's near me. Here are the listings for O'Reilly Auto Parts within six miles. Put in that one, that's the closest. Alright folks, this is what we figured out. Just putting my jumper cables on the car. It didn't fully do it, but it did turn over. 
That tells me we got a dead battery. I have the battery in the back of the car. We're going to go take it for full recharge. We could have an alternator issue. We could have a starter that just decided it would magically turn over for me. But I really doubt that. So starting at the beginning, what I do know for certain, to recap, is that we have a fully dead battery in the car with like no volts. So, that's in the trunk and I'm going to take it to the O'Reilly Auto Parts and we're going to get some charge put on it and regroup before we throw any money at this. It is an economy battery. It's two years old. No visible signs of corrosion. But this could be as simple as just the battery. Or not. Either way. As I was able to tell the poor young gentleman that with the fully charged battery, further diagnostic is not particularly complicated. And there's only a couple of possible things that could cause this to go wrong. And none of them are particularly expensive services. It's all about what the part costs really. I gotta put an alternator on it, that's gonna be an hour. That starter's on the front of it, it's not on the back. It doesn't look too terrible. If it did need a starter, which I do not suspect at this time, then I can make that happen for them in about an hour's billing as well to take care of them. So either way, car's not cooked, doesn't need a transmission, head gasket didn't blow, you know, none of that crazy shit. Well, hope y'all are enjoying the view of Eugene as we cruise around, make our way to the parts store. Don't usually go this way. I do sometimes, though. It's one of the first gas stations I stopped in in town, actually. They pump your gas for you here. It's amazing. I was kind of freaked out about it the first time. Oh, and we're going to cross Willamette Street, major intersection here. And I am hungry. We're going to find something to eat while we're out too, that's for sure. Probably something dirt cheap, don't expect extravagant, but... I ate a whole large pizza in one sitting myself last night. That's the only thing I ate yesterday. Kind of how I do is eat once a day. Not anything to eat yet today, and we're past three o'clock. I can tell I'm burning calories. Which I'm not against that idea. I'm in the best shape of my life, folks. And my hair is falling out by the handful. This might be my last year with the scraggly ass looking hair. I think I'm going to do it up like Jean-Luc Picard after this. I still have plenty. Right now I got the Klingon forehead going on, but I lose so much in the comb every day. But I'm over 40. I'm not going to be sad about it. I'm a very adulty adult. I'll be sexy as a bald guy. We'll work with it. Some some more of the older housing around here. We got some neat looking California style. I don't know what you want to call that, but neat on the left. Neat little bitty guys on the right. College houses. Now that's an electric Jeep in front of me. The 4xE. Gordon stickers anyway, that might be the first one I've seen in person. Jeeps are a niche here. You would think they'd be more popular than they are. People are obsessed with Subarus. They're very confused, I know. The Subaru has excellent marketing and terrible engines, and I just wish that some other brand, any other brand, would have hijacked their marketing campaign. 30 years ago. Just taking that department. 
put that kind of development towards the sales of decent vehicles that would treat somebody right, you know? <laughs> alright, alright, we'll quit giving the Superoid shit today. It's through everywhere. It's always something to remind me. Most of my clients drive Toyotas, which are exceedingly reliable cars, as everyone tells you. I seem to do an exceeding amount of service on them. But most... Most of the time it's fixable stuff, and when you got to fix it, it doesn't feel like the company you designed it hated you for the most part. I mean, every, every vehicle has its thing. Not that a Toyota dies any less. Turn right onto Street. That it generally dies of temporarily of reasonable services that need to be completed. Reasonable parts and reasonable ways to change them for the most part. The big stuff seems to stay in them. We're less than a mile from the parts store where we're going to drop off this battery. I got it all day after this curloid. In fact, I know I do. Here we go. Continue on Chamber Street for half a mile. I'll do that. I'll continue on Chamber Street for half a mile. What you want about whatever. Look at all the waste these fine gentlemen have found in the community and have turned into money and have picked up out of the yards. Totally down. We have our problems here, folks, but they're different. And in the end, it's different. I used to do the oil changes for those pizza delivery vehicles. And boy, I tell you, them old trucks, them old trucks all got 300,000 miles of pizza delivery on them. It's pretty funny when the delivery vehicle of choice for them is a taco truck, but you know what? I can't blame them. They definitely have got their mileage out of them. And they're going to continue to. Hold straight, short, and wait for this Mazda here. The Mazdas are good cars. I don't mind giving them a little room. A quarter mile, your destination will be on the left. Alright, let's just keep getting over left. Until we get up here to it. don't want to be in this lane. Why take it easy? Oh, I did want to be in that lane. I did not enjoy that intersection right there and how they have that laid out. We'll do something the average Oregonian thinks is a federal crime. A U-turn. A real U-turn. A not even stop U-turn. Just like that. People freak out when they do that. I have not determined whether or not it's okay to make U-turns in Oregon or not. But the populace seems to think not. But you know what? I make them safely. If that's what they finally get my ass for, guilty as charged. 
All right, we've arrived at the O'Reilly's. Let's drop off this battery and get it charged up for this young gentleman. Well, we got that battery dropped off for charging and testing. And I got some pricing information from O'Reilly's with my discount on this particular 2004 Mazda 3. Looks like an alternator is 189 bucks for it. $40 core. A starter would be right at 160. I don't think we need that. A decent battery is 124. We will shop that hard, but that's probably not bad for the decent battery. I didn't quote the price of the cheaper battery. There is one 10 bucks cheaper. There's also nicer stuff to get. Just I always started the the regular, not the economy craft. So it's going to be one or more of these things. I'm 90% sure. Step one though, let's get a full charge on this battery. I'm hoping for the customer's sake. They just tell me there's a bad cell on this economy battery and we put a battery in it and that's the end of the troubles. Well anyway, I'm hungry. It's never a very smart idea to go grocery shopping while you're hungry. But I'm going to head to the grocery outlet. So let's see where that's going to be from here. I think I just set up chambers. but Grocery outlet near me. Here are the listings for grocery outlet within 12 miles. 12 miles? That's like the other side of the world here in Eugene. Okay, it's three miles away. That seems more normal. So, it's always hairy trying to get out of here. I'm going to take the back way out so it's not as hairy. whole thing regroup itself and decide which way is up. I would like to get a standalone navigation unit for this car if such a thing is decent and still exists somewhere. I want to go that way, no matter what it thinks about it. That's the way I want to go. go straight across. Let's get a left out of here if we can, folks. Come on with it. Y'all are not letting me the fuck out. Not gonna get frustrated with traffic out here, though. Yeah, see now you got your head screwed on straight. Just ignore the GPS folks that don't know to start with. So grocery outlet is pretty cool. I hope they get one near where you're at soon. So what they got is well they have regular offerings. But it seems as if what they go about doing is to liquidate over orders from other places. So what I end up getting, whoa bud, is low prices on everything I get. But I think it's all from Trader Joe's or something. It's all fancy bougie brands and stuff as that. So I'm eating a little higher quality and I'm also hardly paying anything for it. So we'll see if they got some kind of great deal on something today. What you can't do is to decide exactly what you might want to eat there and buy only that. That's not a good idea. But if you let the deals lead you to what you're going to buy, it's awesome. In a quarter mile, turn right onto West 2nd Avenue. No, I don't think I want to do none of that GPS. I think I want to go straight the heck ahead. Okay, it is right. I do want to take a ride up there. I'm one street over from where I thought I was. Grid Street, you'd think it'd be simple. 
and in reality it is unless you're an idiot from down south like me and have no idea what a reasonably planned town is supposed to be like and then you get lost in the regular where you could find yourself and lost very interesting stuff car on a Volkswagen it's another thing out here people just ride their temporary tag forever forever ever that looks sketch worked on a few sketchy vehicles down in there before too people need help though they pay just the same as anybody who needs a starter on a car, it seems like. They treat you better. Turn right onto West 2nd Avenue. Alright, let's turn right on West 2nd. I see the Union Pacific is moving some big steel through town. In a quarter mile, turn left onto Chamber Street. It is possible that I have to wait on them. That's fine, I like trains. Yeah, you hauling and you hauling wide there, pal. Yeah, that's real wide, buddy. That was a poor maneuver. I mean, I guess nothing got smashed. We're all good. Specialty plumbing. old mercury see what I mean about survivor cars folks thing is you'll see a car like that in Georgia what you won't have is somebody call me to fix that car in Georgia but here oh no uh, people own things like that who are not gonna work on it themselves all the time it's the wonderful climate that allows for it It's my turn. Stay where you're at, Subarus. Never trust a Subaru Prius or Kelsa. Any of them three. Might be driven by a non driver at any time. We're not going to aggressively pass the bus, but we're going to try to get past the bus. change lanes before the intersection. Yep, did good. Alright. Here we are on River Road, kind of the main drag stomping grounds. Y'all seen me come through here a few times before. Everywhere ends up taking you to River Road in Eugene. Sure is pretty out right now though. Think tomorrow's supposed to be dry and sunny? got way too many cars to fix tomorrow as a result but I am very solar powered and just this little bit of sunshine is making me well feel better mentally by the second I swear it makes my old hands not hurt as bad probably just in my mind that old trucks up for sale on Craigslist Pretty, pretty Eugene. You can see we got the town of trees from the air. It doesn't look like there's a town here. It looks like indoor. Look at it all blooming out. Yep, there's Terpene Station on the right, one of the best dispos in town, and where I will be picking up my clones in the next couple of days. It's almost planting season for this year. Last year's has made it, there's plenty left. It is plausible, not proven, but plausible that last year's grow will make it full circle to this year's harvest. In which case I've had to purchase none. 
fact, I'm pretty sure between the home grow and what people tip me with that I have stashed up, I probably am good through November, December when it'll be close. If I run out, it won't be for long, which is nice because cannabis is not particularly expensive here, far from it. However, one less expense, just completely one less expense, yeah, that's the way to go. As most of y'all know, I keep my tobacco bill to a minimum. We've knocked out the regular sugary soft drinks. We're doing something a little less healthy on that point now, but maybe not. You know, I mean, I was going to get diabetes from my two liter Coca-Cola a day. Anyway, grocery outlet, they got 50 cent energy drinks. The greener side. I haven't been in that one in a minute. Another Dairy Mart. Those little bus stops everywhere. And folks, I don't know if you can feel it. Can you feel just the goodness in the air right now? I hope you can. I hope you can experience that as well. And I hope that, you know, if you've been cooped up or... I hope that people find these videos soothing in some way. I've been told by one person or another that they do. They like to just hear me rattle about nothing and watch me drive the car around town. So, those are pretty easy videos to make. They take a long time to render. But if people are getting enjoyment out of it, I'm going to keep delivering it. So grocery outlet will be up here on the left. And turn in there. And the quarter mile, turn left. And then we will head back to the house. One lap. pretty right now 30 minutes before I got in this car it was just pouring rain and pouring rain and pouring rain and I was wondering where the sunshine they were calling for last week was supposed to be take the next right on the river road then turn left and the forecast the is so, yeah then shut up right. GPS I the GPS tells me I should get back on the road to park Oh well. Like I say, I'm open to listen to the advice of the machines. But I hear crap like that, and then I tell people they want a full self-driving car? Yeah, sure. Right. Your destination is on the right. As it turns out, I'm dumb enough. I don't need the car to dumb for me. I don't like this parking at all. At all, at all. I don't like how close that. You want to give my bumper some room, pal? Thanks. If you scratch it walking by, it'll honk at you. I just gotta remember how friendly everybody else is. It has been a big adjustment for me to live in a friendly place or these folks they don't mean anybody any harm and I'm just used to having such a defensive posture at all times anyway I'm happier about that parking let's go get some food let's keep it cheap though we don't want to overspend today cool cool well I went into that grocery store with the goal of spending $20 or less, and I spent $19. That's for a 12 pack of Thailand equivalent Red Bulls called Carabao that I very much enjoy. We got chicken hockey pucks, aka crispy chicken sandwiches, buns, 
chips, chocolate, some Easter candy, some fig newtons, and two frozen dinners. So realistically, those things to eat for a couple of days, things to keep me going for a couple of days, fight the caffeine without the sugar. I know y'all might be concerned about energy drinks, folks. These are real light duty as well. There ain't a whole lot of caffeine in them. They're not very big either. So think like a diet light 40 calorie Red Bull. Anyway, I'm getting my caffeine without a whole bunch of sugar. My body seems to feel better from that. All right, here they come. If they run by while we're here, you'll see blue lights on a fire truck or an ambulance, which is different. Nope, they're going somewhere else. All right, Lubit USA worked there for a little while. Fond memories. Not all the best things to say, but good enough things to say. And I will send my customers there to have lube done. We'll beep at them. They'll stand it out front like they usually do, like I did. Drove me crazy, though. Just constantly felt like, this is the most way y'all can figure out how to earn a dollar off of me being standing here? Really? For real? Yeah, okay, Captain. They tried to tell me they didn't know that I would make it as a mobile tech and that they figured I'd be back in a couple of months. Well, it's been hard. And you know, I can't cuss them for saying that to me. Maybe that was the exact motivation I needed in my heart was someone's doubt for me to be able to achieve white label extracts. And another great dispo right over here. So, that was enough for me when they said that. It was like, oh yeah, watch this. And here I am. Again, it's hard. I run my own business. I'm, I'm not rich at all. Far, far from it. But let's take that back a notch. My bills are paid. I got my groceries. I'm helping people. I like my car and my life and my town and where I live and the people I interact with. I'm not in debt out my eyeballs. This car is the only thing I'm in debt on and it's worth more than I owe on it. Positive equity. I know, what a concept, right? Well, we got it here. Not a big fistful, but something. So long story short is, no, I don't have the thousands to play the way other folks my age do. I don't have the financial security or some of the luxuries that some of them think they have. But I'm a free man. This is what I do. This is my work day. This is what I did today for work. Didn't even charge for what I did today. No reason to. We charge when we do actual work. I guess what I'm saying is... A wizard is never late, nor is he early. He always arrives precisely when he decides. Today felt that way. Not felt that way the last couple, but in the end, it's me breathing down my neck. I do it to myself. I ain't got no fat boss getting rich off of me, yelling at me, wondering why I'm not doing X, Y, and Z. I can beat myself up just fine. So it's a good life. It's not an easy life, but it's a good life. Wow, I just watched some Subaru pull some mediocrity. Decided to pass the truck on the honor amp. I didn't do a very good job of it. Say, so, hey, look out for them. Look out for ratty Subarus. You may very much have a non-driver behind the wheel.
my stomping grounds. This is the Green Acre Shopping Center. It's a really awesome Goodwill and Computer Center. There's my burger house on the left. It's where the taco burger comes from. I gotta have another one of those soon. Those are great. Market of Choice, that's where my groceries live before they send them to grocery outlets. When I buy them at discount. Interesting. Taco Time has a taco burger as well. Directly across the street. Pacific Northwest, folks, if you don't know what a taco burger is, it's what it sounds like. Go home and make one. As I tiptoe through the gearbox. Now, folks, my car's slow, but it ain't this slow. I mean, we could definitely catch these people or keep pace with them at any time if I felt like it. I'm capable of being the most aggressive driver in town. I take it easy. I don't need to prove anything to any of these people. I don't need to prove to them how fast you can actually drive a 78 horsepower car. I don't need to prove to them what a redneck can do in a corner set if pressed. Come on with it, man. Almost out of my system. Almost. You'll never get it all out. And I say that as I properly apex this out. See, we can catch it just by just by going to a quickened pace. That's the thing, though. That's all you get. There, there isn't much beyond quickened to race on this car. But again, I had fast my whole life. Some kind of fast. This is the least fast of them all. Somehow, I feel like it's the best. It's one of the best shifters I've ever felt in any car, at any price. I mean, just blindfolding puts you behind the stick, and it feels like the example, like the reference to what they ought to feel like in front wheel drive cable cars. I mean, it damn near feels gated. Back by Cal Young Middle School. I think it's spring break right now. Well, the pretty has stuck with us for the entire drive, folks. I've enjoyed it. We're making progress towards the ends. We're getting what I need. Another step in the right direction. This old little Civic. Call me when you have issues with it. I'd be happy to fix that up for you. Take that bumper. I'd probably give you back 30 horsepower on the car too. It's just a mild tune up. It looks like a goodie. Just need a phone call. Alright, back to the high school field. That's where I dump cars. We just keep everything on semi-public private property to the point that nobody knows what the real answer is. That might put me in four-way jeopardy if ever called upon it. But for right now, it basically means no one cares, which is how I prefer it go. Looks like there's some folks doing something at the track and field. Can't blame them. Today would be a great nice day at this point. Alright folks, looks like we made it. That was a close one. Y'all come back now. Let's get in the house and cook this chicken.
All right, everybody, we made it back to the house from that one. We've got the battery at the O'Reilly's charging up. We'll be able to do further diag as soon as that drops in, but I'm betting that sorry-ass battery is at least half the problem, if not the entire problem. That would be good for the customer, too. We'll find out. Hope you all enjoyed ride along with me today. Enjoyed seeing Eugene on a pretty day and just going to do the regular. Let me know your thoughts. If you enjoy the content, like, subscribe. Talk to me. I will respond to every comment I get on YouTube. So, let's go, everybody. Keep watching. I appreciate you.